You're watching Two Horsepower. My name is Rolf. Let's go. I'm sure that a huge number of homegrown snobs are wrinkling their noses and writing comments in the style of how can you compare an aristocratic defender with a redneck Prado? Because their users are completely different, they're from different worlds. Probably, but it happens only in the fantasy dreams of Ukrainian nobility. Information from the official vendors, on the contrary, is very specific and realistic. New Defender very often comes to see the owners of Land Cruiser Prado, because they use it for hunting, fishing and outdoor activities. Not because there was no money for the Defender, but because the previous Defender was too spartan and less versatile than the Prado. Land Cruiser is a legendary off-road vehicle for farmers, fishermen men and random people who want to hunt for mammoth exactly in a Prado. As for my attitude toward Land Rover, between black truffle risotto and milk and social bread, I choose the second. And not that I grew up with holes in the wall, but if your grandfather didn't invent the term shooting break, and you still think that a girl from the next door apartment is a goddess of ecstasy, then don't pretend you're the Duke of Edinburgh. Let's talk not only about coolness, but about real possibilities of cars, because if a Prado or Def will get stuck or will break down somewhere in the jungles of South America or in Siberia, for Jaguars, Crocodiles and Furious Beasts your distant relationships with the Attorney General of Ukraine is not an argument. They do not really care about the leather, vibrating massage seats and Alcantara on the ceiling, but we will not forget about coolness too. Because prosecutors in real life, unfortunately, rarely get stuck in the jungle, they are very concerned about the presence of Apple CarPlay or, for example, heated steering wheel in the car. And now let's compare the multimedia and panoramic cameras in both cars. The graphics from Toyota is some kind of incessant characteristics for the user with a rusty knife, which is infected with anthrax, botulism and coronavirus at the same time. Looking at this riot of colors at once, you think about the console wars between Atari and Sega. A 360-degree camera. The impression is that it shows you the braille that you have to visualize in your brain bypassing the optic nerve. Can this even be compared to a Defender camera and graphics? Yes, but it will be a horrible low-bro fantasy action movie where samurai with katanas confront spacemen in power armor with chain swords and bolters. In other words, a short and bloody movie. In justification of Toyota, I will say that it has Android Auto and Apple CarPlay, but against the logical and simple interface a la smartphone from Defender, Toyota has nothing to oppose yet. Although Japanese one-cell steampunk during the test worked without failure. But Defender Multimedia had some problems a couple of times, which was treated by simply turning off the ignition. Here's an example. After I had a little flat tire on our Defender, a real woe happened. We lost a wheel. That is, in the picture we see three wheels that are in the car. We see the spare, we see that all these wheels need to be pumped up. But the right front wheel has disappeared from the radar and I think that an impressionable person may be surprised and even frightened. That's how we lost a wheel on the spot. So it turns out now we have no wheel, perhaps the system says it is. And it's scary. So we have, as always, a struggle of reliability and innovation. That's probably how we should have started the program. With the phrase, hello, you're watching Two Host Power, my name is Rolf, the truth of the womb, because right now we're showing the truth about the cars that we have on the test.
As you can see, Land Rover Defender stopped before the obstacle. Braking was initiated at the last moment, but then let go of the brakes in the hope that I suddenly come to my senses in a heart attack and as if to catch the brakes. In general, our first attempt was ambiguous. Nevertheless, the car showed signs of life and the car showed that it can brake autonomously. Now let's try to make it able to brake autonomously, not against obstacles, but to stop on its own without interference of foreign objects. Now it was though a pretty hard attack, but in fact the car stopped itself, the distance well, let's face it, about 50 centimeters, but nevertheless the fact remains. The defender goes off and the autonomous braking system works. Unfortunately we cannot drive at speeds over 30 km per hour, because even in a configuration for $80,000 you should pay extra money for adaptive cruise control. And then when adaptive cruise control is on, you will also have autonomous braking at high speeds. Now I guess we're gonna give this car a third try. Okay, let's do it. And we'll still have it with them using the video camera from the Defender itself. In general it seems to me that soon we will not need video cameras, because the car itself will be able to film everything perfectly. That's the kind of a firm, guys. A real-time cartoon. If you remember, I promised Toyota not to scratch the car, which is why the moment the Toyota told me it was time to brake, but didn't start doing it itself, I had to slow down, because we need to save this paint to the photographers. If I didn't start braking myself, as you understand, we would have ruined this whole structure. I don't understand why the Toyota system doesn't work either. Now we're doing take number two. This algorithm for some reason does not work or works up on half, because there is a sound signal, text signal, but the car itself does not break. Maybe not, although in all the instructions, in all the videos it breaks at once, see how I do, but in fact this is different 3D graphics from real life. Attempt number two. The second run, everything is on, PCS works, maximum enough time. Don't forget to buckle up in your cars, even at speeds under 20 km per hour. Here's 20, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going, we're going. It's the same, I slowed down on my own. Second attempt, same thing, I had to help the car to stop. The audible tax signal was there. I'm going to do active cruise control one last time, we'll try driving at 30 km per hour, maybe something will change there, maybe some algorithm will work and that's it. Как 
Anyway, nothing works. No matter how you turn it on, you kind of hear the sound, you see the text message, but the car does not break itself. That's all about it. That's all. I'm not some mega expert on off-road, but for 20 years of work as a car journalist, of course, I tested the cars in deserts and mountains and in mud and even on Ukrainian off-road asphalt. So I have some experience. Defender is completely digitalized car. Puddles, cramps, sand. So I am hesitating between what to take. Puddles or sand? And of course, I will lift the car as high as possible. We have air suspension with very good stroke, and that's one of the main rules. As soon as you go off-road, turn on everything you can. Raise the ground clearance, turn on the interlocks, because when you get stuck, all this may not help you. Before you go through a difficult part of the road, you have to get out and go through it with your feet to understand how you are going to pass it all. And there may be some hidden obstacles which you will not notice or it will be too late when you will go in your car. So first you have walked to see what awaits you, second turn on all the systems, third we must clearly understand why you have gone on this very off-road, because the consequences may be absolutely unexpected for you. Of course, we lowered the tire pressure on both cars, as well as tried all possible driving modes and trajectories to exit from the ravine. But the results were not consoling. It is useful to remember here the fourth and fifth rules of off-road driving. Fourth, remember that tires are not less important than diffs, clearance and angle of bumpers. Fifth, an alternative route is never superfluous. I have tried all modes. The more blockings you switch on in such sand, the faster you will dig in. We lowered the tire pressure, but did not feel much effect and stuck in a little further. That's it, let's roll down, go up the alternate route, let's catch up with the Prado. A real battle broke up on the slalom between the DEF and the Prado. Both SUVs left in 13 seconds. Defender's result 12.8, Prado's result 12.64. The difference is one tenth of a second, but Toyota is slightly faster. I wonder how comparable the slalom results of two large SUVs are to results of conventionally urban crossovers. For that, let's look back at our recent test of Japanese crossovers. All of them are one second faster than our wobbly friends. Our monsters have bigger dimensions, weight, ground clearance and higher center of gravity. And the Prado is a frame one. So both Prado and Defender showed themselves very well on a turnpike. We have a new obstacle. This hill at a serious angle. Usually cameras steal all these dramatic pictures. But we have on Prado sensor that shows what angle we will now go down. I turn on crawl control at minimum available speed. So the car itself, without my involvement, finds out how fast we have to go down. So we don't kill ourselves, we don't fall off and please, please, we'll go down quietly.
Great, let's see how well this whole thing works up. But there I go without the crawl control and we'll see the reality of what's going on. Okay, for our favorite visuals, I just turn on the camera, which will show in real time all the beauty and all the horror of what's going on downhill and when we go up. I'll be sure to include the angle at which we will climb, so you can understand all the drama of what's going on. But we'd have to go down first. The cartoon looks frankly more interesting than what I see in real life, because computer graphics cannot be beaten. Really, the computer graphics are leveling this out now. Great, great going down, everything works, everything works correctly, nothing scares me. Here the side view is still on, here is our car. I even pressed the acceleration now, with the heel descent activated, and the car didn't go off into the abyss. Now we're going uphill. The Defender is a high-tech car for comfort, safety and handling. It is armed with the Terrain Response Air Suspension System with Electronic Control, Adaptive Dynamic Suspension Control System, Dynamic Stability Control System, as well as Rollover Prevention System and Cornering Brake Control System. And that's just part of the list. Let's see how all these electronics and suspension settings help the car go through the moves test. We start from 55 km per hour, and here the Defender looks very confident. At 60 everything is good too, but I miss the steering wheel feedback disastrously. I have the impression that I am using a cheap racing game console, and I have to navigate only by the picture from the monitor. As a result, I reach the bar of 65 km per hour, which the Defender doesn't pass, and the electronic just go into the mode of restraining shirt. And here what happens when you immediately after one car with traditions shift to another car with traditions. This maneuver at 55 km per hour demonstrates the depth of contradictions. At very low speed I almost get away and the shifting ceases to be languid. To adapt I even have to roll back to 50 km per hour and then still overcome 55 and 60 km per hour. Moreover, let me remind you that the Prado has an air suspension only in the rear and in front a regular spring. 
From the systems for the comfort of safety and handling, we can mention the system of car stabilization, body position stabilization system and signs recognition. Thus, not only I or the film crew but the Prado itself easily recognize the signs of 65 and even 70 km per hour on the shifting and did not end up lying on the roof but absolutely in the normal state without any hint of a flipping over. Surprisingly, but in the battle of the frame Prado and Defender which has unibody wins a frame SUV which had to lose. So which one is better on off-road terrain, the Defender or the Prado? It's hardly possible to answer this question unequivocally. But it's obvious that Defender absolutely does not suffer from absence of frame and we have checked it not only at comparative test, but also in our The Worst Roads of Ukraine trip. It is also obvious that Prado with a frame is still relevant in off-road conditions, when it is important not only to pass, but also comfort, because the Neva and the Gazelle or Zaporozhets also can go through here. But with Defender or Prado you will be in maximum comfort and much less tired, not to mention the safety. According to my senses, the power capacity of Prado suspension is much more than the Defender's. But the last is not as jumping and bouncing in the pits. Breaking from 60 km per hour. The best result of Defender 11 meters 67 centimeters. The worst 1226. The arithmetic average of three runs 11 meters 93 centimeters. The best breaking of Prado 10 meters 56 centimeters. The worst 1129. The average result 11 meters. You can see the score. Prado's diesel engine is a well-known 2.8 D4D, but upgraded. Now it has 200 horsepower and 500 newtons of torque. The Japanese promise that Prado now pulls out of 10 seconds. Alright, we switch on race logic and accelerate. As a result, 11 seconds is definitely better than it was before, but it's far not less 10 seconds. The Defender's engine displacement is quite modest. 2 liter turbocharged, but it has 240 horsepower and 430 newtons of torque output. Promised acceleration is 9.1 seconds, but real acceleration is 9.5. There is nothing to catch here. But probably more elastic and bigger in volume Prado's engine will be able to resist Defender's engine in the quarter-mile race. The hope was alive at the start. And then it was crushed by arrogant English aristocrat, who brought so much Prado at the finish that you can count yourself. What about consumption? We turn on the cruise control at speeds of 90 and 130 km per hour and get the following results. Prado at 90 km per hour, 6.5 liters. At 130, 11.8. It's very good. The Defender at 90 km per hour has 6 liters at all, but at 130 it rises to 12.9.
what conclusions did I draw from this test? Despite the digital power, great cameras and excellent air suspension, Defender doesn't look dominant in this test. As for me, steampunked Prado gave great battle to Defender in many disciplines. But if the Japanese in the coming years will not release their smartphone with graphics displays, cool cameras and full-fledged pneumatic, then the Prado, even Lexus, will have a hard times. They will be able to compete with European Premium only in the price quality section. But if you do not agree with my opinion, then write your thoughts in the comments. It will be interesting to debate.